Colin Sykes, uh, along with Bonnie Bond with Sykes and Company PA. We're shareholders uh, in Sykes and Company. Uh, we work with hundreds of pharmacies all over the country exclusively. This is all we do. Uh, and on today's Master of the Margin uh, webinar, we first of all appreciate you guys being with us. Um, we have with us uh, representatives, uh, in fact, the CEO and founder and marketing uh, guru from uh, from RX Safe, uh, and Tyler Young from Roberta Pharmacy in Georgia. And we're going to have a discussion on the return on investment with adherence automation, which is obviously an extraordinarily pop popular topic in today's environment. With Amazon PillPack being one of the largest com competitors that you currently have in the marketplace. Uh, as we go through this uh, conversation today, which we're going to do in a more of a conversational uh, approach to this, please don't hesitate to uh, put in your questions. Um, uh, and we'll be happy to try to answer these as best we can. Uh, and again, we appreciate all the participants here. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to Brady at the RXA. So, Brady? Thanks so much, Alan. Hi, I'm Brady Chatfield uh, with RxSafe. Um, we're real happy to be on the Master of the Margin series. Uh, I think this is our second or third time uh, getting invited back, and we're just uh, really appreciative of Alan um, and his generosity to have us on again. Uh, just want to take a second to introduce uh, Mr. Bill Holmes over here, and he is our founder and CEO. He's not only uh, my boss, but he's also the inventor of the Rapid Pack. He's an engineer, an inventor, entrepreneur, has more than 100 patents to his name internationally. And um, there's no better person to talk to you about uh, the <laughs> system and how it really uh, gels with the marketplace needs that we're seeing right now. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Bill. Well, thank you, uh, Brady, and a special thanks uh, to Olin and Bonnie for putting us all together and, and allowing us to uh, share some thoughts and opportunities uh, for you all today. Um, our Safe's in its 13 year, 13th year and has had uh, explosive growth, uh, particularly around the strip packaging technologies we've developed. Uh, we're completely verti vertically integrated uh, design, manufacture, sales, service, and support uh, organization here in Southern California. And uh, we look forward to uh, enlightening uh, all of our uh, listeners here on some really great opportunities to help um, what I care about most in the world, the health and the prosperity of our independent pharmacy owners. So uh, please do uh, ask a lot of questions. Uh, I'd like it to be as interactive as possible. And I want to just kind of make sure I follow my script so I don't miss anything here today. But we're going to take you through sort of a a new way of looking at your world. And uh, uh, I guess I'd start out by teasing a little bit by saying we want you to be the pill pack of your town. And uh, you have a real big advantage over pill pack, and that is uh, you. Uh, the box that, that they offer and that you can offer um, is important. And this is the real product that, that these customers focus on. But when you come with it, you get everything needed to improve your health care with the most trusted and confident uh, professional in the, in the field. So let's talk a little bit about PillPack. Uh, there's a slide on the screen there that shows PillPack is doubling their annual revenues year over year. They've been doing that for quite a while. Why? Uh, well, great marketing for one. There are plenty of other PillPacks type organizations and startups around the country, dozens in fact, but PillPack did it right and they did it first and they were then very attractive to Amazon for acquisition as Amazon is very serious about entering the healthcare space, and particularly uh, the pharmacy space. Uh, they've tried for years, they've got licenses everywhere and now they're in earnest going after it. Uh, they're not going away folks, this is not an experiment. Uh, PillPack was the most attractive at the time. Uh, there's reportedly 750 to a billion dollars spent on PillPack. Um, need to, there you go, thank you. Um, and um, I think a lot of folks know that Walmart was uh, very interested in acquiring PillPack at the time that trans transition took place. Uh, I don't care how good your marketing is, you're not going to get this kind of growth unless you have very high demand. So if you're wondering if there's a demand for pouch packaging among your patients, stop wondering. 
there is. Amazon is stroking the demand. In fact, I think we all ought to thank them for all the money they're spending on TV ads because they're making people aware that there is a way to become adherent where they were not aware in the past. Um, CVS and the chains are all beginning. You might even know that Wall Green Company years ago uh, purchased Daily Med to try to do the very same thing and uh, didn't get a very good marketing push and kind of dwindled away. But they're chasing now. PillPack has got everybody going. They're building gigantic facilities around the country to operate as central fill locations, specifically to compete with PillPack. All of them suffer from the same disadvantage, distance and time. And I would also say indifference, if I may be a little bold. So patient demand of the service is going to grow in the future. Next slide. How do you grow your revenue and your profit? Well, there's a number of ways with this new system. First, um, you can uh, uh, we have to acknowledge that small independent uh, moms and pops that own these stores and uh, some are quite large, so I'm not uh, diminishing that by any regard, but we know when we're running small businesses that their cash is king. Next slide. Pharmacy is pretty simple. You grow revenue by adding patients and monthly script volume. By adding new adherence patients, which tend to have complex drug regimens, you're adding high volume, high value customers to your store. Your existing patients who are adding adherence packaging will increase their refills, and this is, this is uh, been well acknowledged in national studies, from about 7.4 refills of a chronic prescription to uh, 11 and a half to 12. Now think about that for a minute. If you're clinically inclined, there are an awful lot of medications that are actually not helpful and maybe detrimental. So your psych drugs, for example, if you don't take them every month as they're prescribed, and yet the national average on refills is 7.4. So you're missing out on about a quarter of your revenue based on people not showing up for the refills the doctors prescribe, and the patients are not being served by trying to cut corners or forget to get refills or for whatever other reason not do it, because then they're going to have the problem that uh, they're not going to they're not going to follow their, their doctor's uh, orders. Uh, and that's according to data from the APA American Pharmacists Association. Patients on MedSync. Uh, are, are a problem in most stores today. Uh, you spend all this time sinking a patient and then they start to say, well, I don't have stomach pain this week, so I'm not gonna take my ass effects. Can you fill that next week? And they get off sync. One of the hardest things to do is get hundreds of patients on sync and keep them there. This program keeps them there. Adding 10 patients a month. Let's talk about new business. Adding 10 patients a month with, let's say, 10 uh, on average medications per patient and on average about $10 profit per med will get you about $100 new profit per month per new patient. That's $1,200 a year for every patient you add in that, uh, in that formula. Think about it, $1,200 in annual profit per patient per year. That's a big deal. And I'm gonna build that into a formula that I call 301010 here in just a minute. Next slide. So how are we going to get you new patients? That's not the right slide. Yeah, that's the right one. That is? <laughs> this is slide I'm... Okay. Um, oh, my bad. Turn the page on. Sorry. Uh, so how is ArtSafe going to help you get more patients in your store. And this is what really differentiates us from other hardware vendors that drop and run. We are your long-term marketing partner. We are going to bring you new patients to your store without you spending a penny or lifting a finger. Uh, we have a consultative program. Uh, with It's free with the purchase of the system. It's a proven brand. It's called Pack My Meds. Uh, we have a comprehensive approach of long-term partnership. Now you may be saying to yourself, that all sounds great, but it's easier said than done. We know that people that run pharmacies did not go to marketing school or get an MBA uh, in particular and really have no particular uh, high skills in the area of, of sales and marketing. So we have uh, taken it upon ourselves to develop this program, it's extremely comprehensive, unique in the industry to help you do that and let you focus on pharmacy. 
Uh, based on our experience with our Safe customers, typically we had 15 to 20 new patients per store per month. And Brady, what is it? 3,000 or so new patients to our stores this year, year to date? Yeah, it's closer to 4,000 now, just in the last six, seven months. Almost 4,000 new patients have migrated to stores that purchased a rapid pack based on our marketing efforts with a geofence and social media uh, program. We'll talk about that in a second. But we do it for you. We know we that you need to be successful. To be successful, you need to grow. To grow, you need new patients. To get new patients, you need to have a comprehensive marketing and advertising program. And we use very sophisticated social media and geofencing techniques to see who's looking for this product in your area and then send you an email every morning that says, someone fill out a form, they're interested in the box, you should give them a call and then move them over to your store. And on average, you get about two leads like that per day in your inbox in the email every morning. So in effect, we become your marketing partner. Next slide. So what is Pack My Meds Marketing Kickstart? It is a group of activities not going to go through them all because it's kind of time consuming, but essentially we're going to have a, an onboarding progr program and a call with your, you and your staff to decide how and when you want to begin this program. But in, in the simplest terms, we do a 50 mile diameter geofence circle around your store and inside that circle we pull out all the zip codes and load them into our software. Inside that software we constantly monitor the activity in that area for people that are searching for MedMinder, PillPack, adherence problems, my grandma won't take her meds, anything of these hundreds of keywords, we grab that person's identity and the next time they do a search on one of the platforms like Facebook or Twitter or uh, Google, uh, we then pop an ad in front of them that says, are you interested in adherence packaging? Uh, if you are, please fill out this form. It's completely automatic and at no cost. And that drives then this interest in what's going on. And we will also enroll your store in our PackMyMeds.com webpage, which shows all the uh, uh, network of our PackMyMeds pharmacies and uh, allows people to find one that's near where they live. And that's that could be your store. Uh, in addition to that, if you're inclined in your area to want to uh, mail prescriptions to someone in your state, you can also enroll as a remote pharmacy provider and allow people to access their meds from more than a convenient distance to drive. It really works and people are signing up, uh, as we said, every day. We call it the Pack My Meds Network. It's designed to jumpstart your marketing efforts. We provide all the tools and resources from posters and banners and bag stuffers to Facebook advertising and the like, videos and patient testimonials. We'll even do custom videos for your store to put in the the TV in your store or on local TV advertising. Uh, we can also customize your program if you don't necessarily want to use the brand Pack My Meds. Um, as you can see uh, over Brady's head, there's a bunch of custom boxes right there. And so we have a, a fully uh, capable internal uh, design department in our marketing group uh, to do that. You can also do custom animations. Uh, so we have an animator in our marketing department as well. And we've done a lot of stuff, including uh, Rexy the robot, which has been uh, remarkably effective in, in getting people's attention. Next, next slide. I mentioned 30, 10, 10 earlier. <clears throat> These are my favorite numbers. 30 new patients times 10 prescriptions a piece on average, with about $10 profit per prescription on average, gets you $3,000 a month in new profit. Go over that again. 30 people are currently not your customers that we'll give to you through our marketing and advertising media program with an average 10 prescriptions each with average $10 profit per prescription is $3,000 new profit per month into your store. That's cash. $3,000 new profit in cash into your store. Now, a lease payment on our rapid pack system is less than that. So with only 30 new patients, you can get to cash flow break even on the system you see behind me here that does this amazing uh, uh, output of, of uh, 50 or more boxes, uh, monthly boxes for patients per shift with a single technician. And so that's a thousand patients a month with one person and one machine as your uh, capable workflow. 
Uh, that is truly remarkable. Next slide. So after you uh, after your adherence packaging system pays for itself, the profits really begin to add up. With a hundred new patients, that math equates to one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year in new profit. That's family income. Only add a hundred new patients over the thirty, and that's the extra cash from profit from the jobs you do that you drive into your business uh, every year. And if it's 200 patients, that would be 240,000, 300, 360, and the like. Uh, many of our customers are have exceeded these numbers. In fact, Ben McNabb in Eastland, Texas, is north of 500 patients. And when he started the program, he had no adherence patients at all, no adherence products at all, didn't even do uh, blister cards. And has done this whole process um, with our single rapid pack in his store. Truly remarkable. Uh, I don't have to do the math for you. That's more than a half a million dollars a year in new family profit income. Next slide. Uh, cost per job. Every aspect of the rapid pack uh, was designed specifically for the retail pharmacy environment and more particularly for the independently owned retail pharmacy market. We have the smallest footprint of any machine of, uh, that does strip packaging. We're 33 inches wide, 18 inches deep, and 60 inches tall. And it can be placed flat against the wall or in a corner, wherever we want to put it. Um, it has the smallest cost of ownership, smallest acquisition cost. And very importantly, I know how much we hate maintenance fees in this industry. Everyone should and everyone would. We have the lowest maintenance program cost of any of our competitors in the industry. And on top of that, we have the lowest consumables cost. So lowest cost to acquire, lowest cost to maintain, and lowest cost to operate, in that this box with 30 day supply for a patient three times a day, 90 pouches, with the labor from the technician to run the system and the labor from the pharmacist to inspect it through our inspection system, which is also a built-in vision camera system no one else has, is $4.54, far, far cheaper per patient per box than our competitors. And Can I people ask tell a question, us, guys? Um, yeah. So yeah. that cost that you mentioned, do you normally see the pharmacies passing that cost along to the patient, or is that something they usually absorb and do that more as a service? Great question, Bonnie. What we, what we tell uh, people who uh, venture into this space is you shouldn't charge a premium to, uh, to put medications in the strip package and in the box, because that will deter most people from saying, I'll do it, I'll just keep my old vials, I don't want to spend any extra money. Right. So, to my knowledge, no one has decided to charge a premium to get into the program and be served by the box. On the other hand, their cost of filling prescriptions is dramatically lower. So if you're doing five or six or seven vials, for example, uh, it can cost dollars, many dollars less per month to fill it in the box with the strip that we talked about with higher accuracy. And of course, you get the 12 refills instead of the 7.4. So um, there, there's no one to my knowledge passing along, let's say, lower costs in the production side of the business that has so far all been uh, inuring to the benefit of the owner in terms of higher profits. Got it. Okay, Pack My Meds Network Growth. Next slide. This is uh, almost hard to believe. It's so dramatic. But uh, remember the pill pack slide we showed you at the beginning. You might notice a graph bears a striker, striking resemblance to ours. Now, that's no coincidence. This is the market at work. The difference is that the graph isn't pill pack, it's RX safes. And it's the Pack My Meds network growth just over the past year alone. We've been able to essentially duplicate their success in every market we serve from coast to coast. That's every market we serve. Independent pharmacy owners have seen the exact same performance. And with Rapid Pack, you, as I said earlier, become the pill pack of your community. You provide better service, you're local, you can improve their health of your patients. And you can make any adjustments mid-cycle that physicians may order. What does a PillPack customer do 
in this, this first or second week of, of utilization of a monthly supply uh, when, they, uh, when they have a drug change. Answer, pill packs got it covered. Take the rest of them this month, give us at least a week's notice before your next one, and we'll try to catch it on the next cycle. Now, I don't think anybody's well served by that except pill pack. Problem is, when you're thousands of miles away or hundreds of miles away in a large central fill facility doing enormous volume and have no particular attention on any single individual, that's the best you could do. I'm surprised they could even do it that quickly. On the other hand, with a rapid pack system, it's very simple to have the, the patient return the, the unused portion of their strip roll in the box, have you open it in quarantine in your pharmacy, don't mix it with other meds, remove the med that's not needed, add the med that is prescribed, repackage it in the system, and you can do that for under a dollar. So you are a better resource for this that application to your patients than PillPack could ever be. And every single patient that's on a box in one of our pharmacies across the entire country, not one pharmacy's ever lost a patient to PillPack. Once they're on this box in your store, it's extremely sticky. They're not leaving to go somewhere else. PillPack can't offer them something that you can't. So it's a very powerful program. Next slide. All right, so let's talk about the real world and real customers. I'd like to introduce Tyler Young with Heinz Prescription Shop. Tyler is an RxSafe customer and is a customer of Sykes & Company. He, uh, I'd like to ask him to share his experience with Rapid Pack and uh, talk about some of the things we've been talking about and, and be available for your questions. Tyler? Hey, so thank you all for having me on today. It's an honor. I'm glad to be able to join and talk about our experience here at Heinz Prescription Shop. Um, as Alan mentioned er earlier, I am a co-owner of uh, Roberta Pharmacy. However, the pharmacy that has the pill pack is where I'm at primarily, and that's Heinz Prescription Shop. Um, so our journey with Rapid Pack kind of began, um, I guess, 2018. We lost our first patient to Amazon Pill Pack, and I know that was really um, a big blow to uh, my boss at the time. Uh, this lady was one of his favorite patients, had been with him as long as he had owned the store. And to have Amazon kind of swoop in and take them away was a blow to him. So at that moment, I began to kind of research the market and see what was available. Um, and at the time, there were several competitors. I'm sure there still are. I really haven't done much research since settling on Rapid Pack. Uh, but I guess around summer of last year, we, uh, we started the process of reaching out to Rapid Pack and seeing, you know, what it would cost, how to get it installed, how does this work, can we do this for our patients, and uh, I guess around October, we finally got it installed, um, you know, that was really easy to work with, uh, they have a great department that helps answer all of your questions that you have, and uh, we got it installed in October and really got going towards November. Um, prior to the rapid pack, all that we were able to offer our patients was uh, just the bubble packaging, uh, blister packs, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Um, and we did have to charge for it. It was just to cover our cost of the materials. And really, it was more expensive uh, because, it, as you all know, with the bubble packs, it's very time and labor intensive for your technician, as well as your pharmacist to verify. So we were just covering cost of the materials, not even the additional cost of the technician and pharmacist time. Um, but we only had about 20 patients uh, when we finally got the rapid pack in. Um, and then over the course of, I guess, the last 10 months or so, we've been able to grow our adherence packaging to about 60 patients. Um, COVID kind of slowed some of our marketing in town, so we were able to you know, go to some doctor's offices, you know, share with them our service, but COVID has slowed that down a little bit, and we're hoping that once some of the offices open back up, our patient count will go up even more. Um, since installing the Rapid Pack, we've seen our daily fills go up by about 50 scripts per day on average. Um, we've seen our Equip Star ratings go up. Right now, we're, we're trying to get a five star in all categories, but we are at four star in all the categories. So that does help uh, on the DIRN just a little bit. Um, and just about two weeks ago, we finally started dedicating a technician to the Rapid Pack. Uh, almost exclusively full-time. She's going to be in charge of making sure that all the patients stay up to date on their refills, managing them as best she can, because uh, in order to grow it to where we really want it to be, we needed to dedicate somebody full-time to it. 
Um, and I think y'all kind of mentioned this uh, about charging for it. We decided as soon as we installed the Rapid Pack not to charge anymore for the adherence packaging. Uh, it, it's saving us a lot of money uh, instead of the blister packaging. Uh, it's saving us on the technician time. It's saving us on the pharmacist check time. And we just decided that wasn't something we would do, mainly because uh, they can go to pill pack for zero. So we felt like if we were charging, they, they would just find somebody that could do it for zero or stay you know, where they're at, you know, which is the 7.5 fills per year and not synced up. We have uh, been very fortunate um, to gain several patients back from PillPack, actually. When we got the robot installed, we immediately called the lady who had left us for uh, Amazon, and she transferred everything back to us. And just today, we got like our third or fourth patient from PillPack. It's nice to call them and have them <laughs> send us transfers for a change. I enjoy that part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I, you also hit on this as well, uh, but we have several psych patients that we have to pack medications for. And as many of you know, those meds can change every other month, sometimes monthly. It's fairly convenient to make those adjustments for the patient. Um, you know, we offer them two different options. We you know we'll uh, partial fill a medication if it's a new one, uh, but if it is a dose change, we'll go in and actually repack the entire. Uh, the remainder of their medications for that month. Um, and then, you know, we're just hoping to expand and um, really grow this opportunity that we have. Uh, it's, it has slowed down just a little bit because of COVID. We don't have anybody coming in. It's hard to get these patients in to meet with us. You know, they're you know, leery of coming in and discussing all their meds, but it's starting to pick back up in our area. Our areas, uh, largely been unaffected but we most places were closed down for a while we're open back up hopefully in the next couple of weeks and i think after everywhere around here opens back up patients will be coming in and really we'll be able to advertise it even more to them um but i'm open to any questions that y'all have uh, my boss has given me plenty of data on numbers if, if that needs to be discussed and you know, i'm happy to answer whatever Tyler, i've got a question for you have you had any chances or opportunities to go around to assisted living or nursing homes in your region or area and let them know that you have this service? And if so, what kind of impact have you had with that? Um, so the one assisted living facility in our area, um, we lost them uh, about two or three years ago. We were blister packaging all their meds. However, uh, they wanted a company that could do an electronic MAR. Um, and that wasn't something that at the time with the computer system we had and the, the packaging technology we had, that wasn't something we were able to do. We do have a meeting set up with them uh, in the next month or so to discuss what we can do now to get them back. Um, they were affected by COVID as well and haven't let us come in, but we're having that meeting uh, very soon to hopefully win them over again. Gotcha. Gotcha. Tyler, I was going to ask, just out of curiosity, those um, scripts that you've moved back from Amazon to back to you, you guys, um, what is the main um, complaints that you've heard from, from that end? So just your usual mail order pharmacy type complaints, um, you know, inconvenient to get a hold of, uh, hard to get medications when they need them. Um, and I'm sure many people have seen the, the news lately where uh, deliveries are being slowed just a little bit. Um, so some people are going without their medications for you know, a week or so at a time. So it's just the very similar mail order complaints. Okay. All right, we got a number of questions coming in, uh, and whoever wants to take them can. And I'll just kind of take the first one. This one from my buddy Cole in Alabama. Uh, well, Cole wants to know what about tax credits for equipment like this. And I, I can, Bonnie, you want to take that one? Well, I was going to mention once we got to that, because obviously we are going to, um, one other side of this that we haven't discussed is the tax um, advantages of purchasing something like this. Um, many of you um, on this call may be looking for um, something to invest in um, this year to save you on some tax. Um, this Something like this would be perfect. Um, I wanted to mention um, that um, you do have to have something of this um, nature um, 
in your store and able to, to start using it before the end of the year um, as far as being able to use that for depreciation and that sort of thing. Um, but something like this, you'd be able to take um, full advantage of uh, for depreciation expense for 2020. Um, Cole was asking about possible um, tax credits. There's also um, something that we're starting to look at very heavily in our office um, is an R&D tax credit um, that may be available um, in specific situations. Um, so I would definitely um, have that conversation with your CPA and advisor that understands um, that sort of thing um, because there are some major tax advantages out there for a potential R&D tax credit. All right, and the questions are pouring in here. Let me just keep going through the list here. How much space will be needed to, let's see, how, how much how much space will you need to further, how much space do you need? Let's put it that okay. way. Okay, uh, are everybody, is everyone able to see us, Olin, on the video? Uh, I believe so. Okay, so the rapid pack is uh, behind me right here. And uh, it's about 33 inches wide and 18 inches deep. So just a foot and a half deep, it's quite shallow and 60 inches tall. This is the entire operating machine right here. Uh, it has the built-in vision inspection in the bottom. It has built-in vision inspection in each one of the dispensing cartridges. And it allows you to have a um, uh, screen over here that's kind of half off of the view. Uh, anywhere in your store, outside of your store for that matter, that allows the PV2 final verification to take place uh, with, our, uh, with our technology. So you can have a pharmacist in the store reviewing the images of the strips, never have to touch the strips. And uh, it can also be outside the store if you have another store or a pharmacist working from home. Uh, works perfect in our, uh, in our new normal. Is computer software needed? Uh, the system can operate uh, with a standard interface from any of the uh, typical uh, pharmacy management software platforms, such as Pioneer, Peter RX, RX30, uh, Liberty, and the like. How long does the Pack My Meds marketing continue after the purchase of the machine? Well, it's forever. Uh, we we do the Google Ads and the like. Uh, typically for about 90 days. It's uh, not a hard number. Uh, we can allow that to go on indefinitely as well with uh, very small charges for the actual costs of the ads. But, um, you know, we're, we're absolutely dedicated to make sure the growth that we've talked about here today happens inside each and every pharmacy. And we're not going to uh, stop with our resources until those programs are well on their way. And they do tend to get to a point where you've got the you got to prime the pump, and then after you get enough people in your community on the program, uh, word of mouth actually helps it grow faster than just about anything. How many medications does the machine hold? Well, the machine can package up to 20 separate NDCs inside the uh, inside the pouches in the box. Uh, that's you know typically uh, just about 99% of all the, the fills that you'd ever expect to do. And so it actually can take any medication in your pharmacy. So all of your 3,000 or so NDCs will, will uh, be filled by the machine, including uh, tablets, capsules, caplets, gel caps, including clear gel caps, including the vision system being able to identify and verify clear gel caps, and even split tabs and nutraceuticals, vitamins, and the like. So any oral salad you're, you're selling to your patient uh, will be packaged in our system uh, as described. And typically it's one med, one pouch for MedPass because our pouch is a variable size, the only company offering that feature in, in our pouch delivery system. I wanted to ask, um, is there a minimum that it's worth, you know, actually doing this for um, that you normally would see? Well, as I said, uh, we are stand alone able on a cash flow basis to support this product inside any pharmacy. I, I would argue uh, small pharmacies doing 50 to 100 scripts a day might be better served by this than large pharmacies because right. how are you going to grow your business when you're in a pharmacy community of other pharmacies and CVS and Walgreens and Walmart all around you? You have to differentiate yourself. And with our marketing program, we're going to drive those new patients to any pharmacy, large or small doesn't make any difference. So imagine the impact uh, if you're doing 50 prescriptions a day, 
that it would have on you if we added 100 patients to your program and then on from that keep growing your business. How about um, the number of prescriptions? I mean, is it worth doing it if all you take is three a day, five a day, 10 a day? Is there well, a minimum there? Uh, great question, Bonnie. So this is where the difference in pill pack and your local community pharmacy owner is the biggest. Your store, your pharmacy, your pharmacist knows your patients. You could have a patient on three medications that's literally struggling and ending up in the emergency room repeatedly because they simply have some difficulty, cognitive or otherwise, right. finding a way to be adherent. Uh, on the other hand, people with five or six meds are actually cost you less to fill in a box than in vials. So you might say, here's a perfectly competent patient on five meds, but I think they would benefit from the convenience of this packaging and I would like to offer it to them and move them there, they will see it as a benefit and I will save cost. So it really depends on you and your pharmacy patient. If I could jump in there as well, um, sorry to jump in like that, but uh, we have a patient who just has two prescriptions, I think, um, and, and they're interested in having it packed as well. So we don't really turn anybody away. We don't have a, a certain minimum that we have to, you know, say you got to have five scripts or 10 scripts to begin packaging. We offer it to everybody. Um, and some people just enjoy the convenience of not carrying around bottles. They can just tear off their morning dose and go on to work. Well, I was going to say on a personal note, my husband um, takes six, seven, eight pills a day um, for what he has to take it for. Um, and as the wife, I'm the one who has to sit down and pull all those pills out because it's different ones in the morning and different ones in the evening and where we can completely do that no problem it's all about convenience I would love to have someone do that for me so I don't have to sit down and do it every two weeks. And, and this is when you talk about convenience this is the part I love on behalf of the independent owner most people are now starting to take supplements in some cases quite a few supplements and you've seen this every restaurant you've ever been in at noon. Someone is opening their purse and taking out bottles and trying to figure out what supplements to take. And guys can't carry bottles in their pocket, so they put the actual supplements in their pocket. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's exactly what I do. <laughs> I'm telling you, just think about it as an owner. You've got these folks on the package system. You say to them, look, are you on any vitamins or supplements? Oh, of course I am. I take zinc, I take, you know, CoQ10, I take fish oil. Well, listen, I sell those products here in my store as well, and I can put them in your packages with your medications for the right time of day. And convenience then is, as, as uh, Tyler said, you tear it off in the morning, you put it in your pocket in the hermetically sealed package, not your pocket. And at noon, you just tear that open and take your pills. So yeah. it's great for the patient. Patients love it. And... There's no DIR fees, there's no capitation, there's no contracts. The margin you make on your nutraceuticals is your margin. Yeah. There's no telling what's in the bottom of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Another question, uh, QS1, you interface with that? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, how do we handle patients with supplements that want them packed too? I think you just answered that question for Mark. Are the medications manually added to the machine for packaging before doing a run, or does the machine hold the top 50 or so fast movers for packaging in a run? That's a question, Mark. That's a great question. We hear it all the time. Uh, we did a breakthrough in technology by developing the rapid pack system the way we do. There is no inventory in the rapid pack None at all. That, that, that uh, accounts for its small size, but it also accounts for its speed and accuracy. So at the end of the day, with a single technician assigned, as, as Tyler said, to this process in your store, uh, the question is, what can one machine and one technician do in one shift in terms of productivity? One machine, one technician, one shift. And the answer is more than 50 patient boxes, more than 50. That is nearly double our nearest competitor, and we have a 200 times less error rate in pouch sealing than anyone else in the world. 
And that is very important because you guys are in the fill it business, you're not in the fix it business. So rather than focusing on cassettes like, uh, like these obsolete little pill droppers here, uh, and rather than focusing on meds in there, meds out of there, um, you, you, you already heard uh, Tyler talk about how inconvenient and expensive it is to, pill, to fill blister cards. Everybody knows that. Everybody's filled a blister card. Pill at a time into each pocket. And then if it's a multi-med card, you know, you take it and shake it like this to see if you can inspect it all. And uh, you get the neck pain problems from that. Got to go to the chiropractor with that. So, you know, all of that pill at a time stuff is error prone and labor intensive and inaccurate. And all of the competitive machines that claim to have inventory stored in them have what they call as an exceptions tray. It's an exceptions tray. You pull it out of the front and it's got 60 holes in it. And that's where you go get a bottle and a pill at a time, put them in there for the med that's not loaded in your top movers. And that happens 80% of the fills, you have to do that. That is far slower than the process I described, which results in what's really important now, more than 50 patient boxes, month supply, 90 pouches each, one technician, one machine, one shift at the lowest cost. Question from Vanessa, how are the pouches labeled? Is each medication listed on each pouch? I can show you. <laughs> Medication by medication, it appears to me. Yep. Yeah. Message. And because, and because uh, Bonnie, uh, because we built this machine from scratch, we also designed and built our own printer. The printer is thermal, unlike all of our competitors that use an ink ribbon, like the old IBM Select typewriters that push the ink onto the paper. Uh, we don't have any of that uh, ink ribbon at all. It's all thermal paper, extremely high quality, high resolution. And we essentially create a bitmap for each pouch, which allows the pharmacy owner complete freedom, Olin, in putting anything on that pouch they like. So uh, as, as Tyler might tell you, if you get someone that's got uh, wet AMD or is vision impaired somehow, you could put a great big black M on the pouch for morning, a great big L for lunch, and a big D for dinner. And it's useful because they can actually read it. Or you could have it have more instructions about Take one med with another, whatever warnings you like, and you can put any logo you want. And you can put empty pouches at the beginning, in the middle, anywhere, and at the end for messages like, go get your insulin out of the refrigerator, it's time to administer a dose, or uh, your seven days from refill, call your pharmacy if you've had any drug changes, or take your blood pressure and write it down, whatever you like. You can completely customize that with our system and our printer so the labels are whatever you want them to be. All right, this is from Keith. He says, we already have the RX Safe. How do we get started with the marketing program? Uh, if it's an RX Safe, uh, that's a vial filling robot, and uh, that is generally uh, our legacy product. Uh, I imagine we do a marketing program for that, too. We haven't been asked that question good. before. Yeah. But if you have a rapid pack, uh, just call Brady, and they'll start the program tomorrow. Are there limitations on languages, or is that determined by the pharmacy management software? It is, in fact. Uh, whatever we get from the pharmacy management software, we can put on the label. Uh, we don't do any on uh, in-stream translations because we do nothing that could be clinically interpretive. Uh, we want to follow the exact instructions that you, the pharmacy uh, person in charge, responsible pharmacist, would like it to be. And so whatever the pharmacy host can send us, we can put on the pouch for you. All right. Uh, Dave wants to know if we need special SIGs or notes we customize ourselves, or do you change it? No, that's the same answer. That's all done up front in the pharmacy host, pharmacy management software. And the interface that comes across from that host to us literally says, here's pouch one, here are the pill contents, and here's what it says on it. Pouch two, pill contents, and what it says on it, and so on. All right, this is from Frank, and I don't know that I understand it. I'll try to read it. We are currently servicing existed living facilities with heated seal panini press. Do you have any pharmacies using this machine for all ALFs? 
Well, I honestly don't. I don't know how to answer that, Olin. I'm not sure I understand it. I don't know that either, Frank. Maybe you could reword that, please. Um, let me keep going. Dave wants to know how is your customer service for issues? How is our customer service? Uh, what was the last? He says, "How is your customer service?" Oh, well, ask uh, Tyler. Tyler. So yeah, I'll take uh, that one. Um, the customer service has been great. So we've had a few hiccups early on in the installation process as we're getting adjusted. Uh, generally, when you call, um, it, it's usually a hardware issue for us. We call the hardware department. Uh, we explain what's going on. They're able to log in through the uh, computer system that they have. And they're able to diagnose the problem fairly quickly and then get you back and running um, as soon as they can. We have had one issue where a cell went out uh, and they actually flew somebody in from California to fix that specific cell. And in the meantime, we were just down to 19 cells that we could use, uh, which for us is not a huge issue. I think the largest patient we have is uh, 19 medications. He's got a lot of chronic health conditions. And uh, so fortunately, it wasn't a, a huge issue and it was fixed within a week. Yeah, the system is designed with enormous redundancy, Olin. So all of the cartridge systems and all the camera systems operate independent from one another. So if a camera were to go offline for some reason, uh, the system continues to operate normally, as Tyler said in his case, with 19 operable systems. And so uh, we then come out and completely replace the whole optical uh, contents of that cell with all brand new parts. And uh, that is even user serviceable uh, and it's faster to do it that way, so uh, that's an option. All right, we've got about five minutes left. Uh, let me just keep asking these questions here. What are the hours that you are available for customer service? All hours. That's easy. It's a good answer, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only answer. Yeah. Um. How are the Pacific times of administration of the meds determined? Again, in your host PMS system, I'll just take Pioneer off the top of my head. I'm very familiar with them. Uh, when you load your patient information and put all the prescription information in, of course, the doctor does tell you essentially a SID code, right? Take three times a day, however that might be described. And as the, as the information is being entered into the PMS system, you then have the ability to add SIG codes, interpret SIG codes, and then essentially create a matrix of what that means for uh, medication administration time. So you'll decide what three times a day means. Is it 9 a.m., 12 o'clock, and 5 o'clock? Or is it 8 a.m., 11 a.m., and 7 p.m.? Whatever you want it to be. And then you'll look at the mixture of meds in that particular patient's job and say, okay, this works really well. If we do a three times a day at nine, one, and seven, and that will be how you prescribe it in the PMS system. And it comes across, as I said, the, the interface to our system where it says pouch number one has these meds in it, and this is printed on the pouch, and this is the med time, pouch number two, pouch number three, and so on. So it's Monday morning, Monday noon, Monday night, and you can have as many med time administrations per day as you like, seven, eight, nine, depending on what it takes. Some organ transplant and HIV patients have very specific uh, regimens like that, and we can accommodate any any single one of them. All right, we're coming down to the last few questions. I want to go back to Frank's question. He is giving us to us one more time. He says, "Sorry, guys, assisted living facilities require unit dose packaging with lots, expiration dates, description, etc. Do you have yeah, any pharmacies okay. using your machine to fill single med boxes for these facilities?" Yes, the answer is absolutely yes. And we are the only machine, the only technology that I know of in the entire world that every single pouch gets the exact NDC prescribed with the precise expiration date on that pouch. And you can switch that three or four times to the process. And this is where our system really shines. Let's say you had a prescription to fill, single med, 90 pouches, and you had 45 of generic A, and, and or let's just say med A of a certain date, the same medication NDC with a different date, another 45 pills. When you load the system, when you identify a, a uh, expiration date like that, it's gonna say take one cartridge and put that first 45 pills in it with that NDC and that expiration date information. Take another cartridge 
to take the other 45 pills with exactly the same NDC but a different expiration date. And the first 45 pouches that are produced will have the first date on it, and the second 45 pouches produced will have the second date on it. In every case, every pouch, single med or otherwise, always has the correct NDC, drug information and identity, and lot number and expiration date. Absolutely every time. No one else does that. When you take these old cassettes from our competitors, for example, and you fill pills in there, when you have to add, in, add inventory, you put it right on top of the other pills. How do you know which one is the right number uh, and the lot number and expiration date when you're mixing them and churning them around internally uh, when, you're, uh, when you're dispensing them? What is the typical turnaround time placing in order to install? Uh, if you order today, I can have it installed and running within a week. That's easy enough. Uh, question from Dave about pricing and leasing. I know you guys have a capital lease program. You obviously can purchase. Uh, obviously, capital lease, uh, you need to talk to your tax advisors about how that impacts you, but chances are you have an opportunity for Section 179 depreciation if you have income and can utilize that. But uh, any comments you want to make there on that question? Yeah, we have th uh, relationships with third-party leasing companies such as Advantage Financial, Pete Davison. Uh, we have no financial connection to Pete. He doesn't pay us. We don't pay him. It's a complete arm's length transaction. Uh, we have two or three uh, uh, folks like that we recommend, very commonly used. Or you can go to your own bank, your own leasing company, or you can do an outright purchase. And um, before I go to any final questions, I just want to remind everybody that Sykes & Company has an RX assessment service whereby we can take your accounting books and records and tax returns and do a deep dive down into your accounting file and your tax returns. And then we do a video call similar to this and we go through it from top to bottom. You will learn more about your pharmacy, good, bad, and indifferent than probably you ever have. Uh, from a firm that works exclusively with pharmacies all over the country for decades. Uh, we do offer this service. It is $1,495. You will come away with it with actionable items, um, which is the reason for the charge, because some of these actionable items are significant and have tremendous bearing to you from a, either a tax or an accounting perspective. So we offer that to you. It's on our website, upper left-hand corner. It's at the bottom of this slide here sykes-cpa.com forward slash intake hyphen form. Uh, if you registered here for this session today, you will get a copy of the uh, video. It'll be sent out in a day or so. Um, so you'll be able to watch it again and or pass it on to people who haven't seen it. Um, and I'm just trying to see, uh, guys, if there are any last questions. Tyler, Bonnie, you guys have any last comments or questions? I do not. I just thank y'all for having me again. And um, if you're looking for a good packaging robot, or really the best packaging robot, Rapid Pack is it. Okay. Thank Bonnie. you, Todd. I appreciate that. I just want to re reiterate um, the tax credit that's possibly out there um, with something like this, and to you know reach out to your CPA and advisor about that. And just one final comment, the information contained today is just for general information use only. You need to seek advice from your own uh, accounting tax and financial advisors on any potential investments that you're looking at. Uh, guys, Mark Safe, we appreciate you being with us again today on our Master the Margin series. Obviously, you got a very hot product here. We've got many clients that are utilizing the system. Um, and I, was just, I would expect that between now and the end of the year, you may be pretty active. <laughs> thank you very much uh, you. Olin and Bonnie you guys are great and Tyler we appreciate you taking time away from your busy day and, and uh, very grateful to y'all absolutely we hope Thanks, to see guys. everybody on a road show pretty soon uh, whenever Kobe gets away we're all anxious to get back out oh we are alright take, take care. care have a great day thank you thank, thank you, you.